Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's your host, Landing DX. Today guys, I have a special video to you guys. Today marks the first very episode of The Road to Sonic the Hedgehog, which, for the simple, is where I have to play every single mainline Sonic game. But what is considered to be a mainline Sonic game is up to debate. Many people could consider Shadow the Hedgehog to be a mainline game, while others don't. To me, I don't know if I would consider it or not since I never played it, but according to a website called Escape Magazines, there are a total of 17 mainline Sonic games. While I am, oh, I know Sonic Superstars is out and all, the thing is, I don't know if it's really considered to be a mainline Sonic game or not. And I haven't looked it up yet as I'm recording this, so I won't include it in this episode. But probably when we do the next episode of Road to Sun the Hedgehog, I will bring it up. The thing is, according to East Game Magazine, there are a total of 17 mainline Sonic games I mentioned, which are Sonic 1, 2, CD, 3, Sonic and Knuckles, Adventure 1 and 2, Sonic Heroes, Sonic 06, Sonic in the Secret Rings, Unleash, and the Black Knight, Colors, Generations, Forces, Lost Worlds, and Frontier. You see, this is where we first run into the problem. See, out of the seven games, I don't own four, which are Sonic Heroes, 06, Sonic the Black Knight, and Sonic Unleashed. Well, Sonic Unleashed is technically true since I do own Sonic Unleashed, but I own it on the PS3, and I do not own a PS3 anymore, so I can't really play. So I won't count. When it comes down to what games I'm gonna play on what and how, it's debatable since Sonic Lost World's Generations are both available on Steam and the majority of the Sonic games. Sonic Generations X Shadow was just announced yesterday on January 31st of this year. So I do own it on Steam, but it crushes my laptop too much since I don't own a desktop yet. So I'm just going to wait until Sonic X Shadow comes out. But when it comes down to the rest of the games, it's up for debate. Since I own Sonic, when it comes to playing the rest of the games, it's kind of up for debate. Since I do own Sonic and Secret Rings, one Adventures 1 and 2, I could play those on the original Wii since they can play GameCube games. But also, the Wii, I will be playing Sonic, uh, Sonic the Black Knight in Heroes to clear that up. When it comes to Sonic Colors, it's debatable since the original Sonic Colors was on the Wii. But thanks to the ultimate version, you could play any console. I will play probably like I'll play the ultimate version since I already completed it. It'll give it an easier time to review everything it has. For Sonic Forces, Frontiers, and Origins, I'll be playing on Nintendo Switch. For Rising Out, this is the way I will play these games. The thing is, there is no order in how I play these games. Hence my honest opinion, I think the best way for me to play these games is to play whatever game I want in any order since it gives me a better chance to reflect on both options. So for this video, I will be playing Sonic 1 on the Origin Collection for the Nintendo Switch. When it comes down to Sonic 1, I personally enjoyed it. This is the first time I actually played Sonic 1 to completion. And I did own Sonic 1 on the Game Boy SP Advance, but that one's known to be one of the worst versions. And while I have played Sonic 1 on the original Sega Genesis, I've barely played 10 minutes of it. So when Sega released Sonic Origins Plus, I was honestly excited to play through it. I picked it up. I'm having a blast playing through Sonic 1. Currently playing through Sonic 2. Be a video coming out sometime this year. But still though, we're talking about Sonic 1 here. Sonic 1, I enjoyed. Thanks, plus thanks to the anniversary anniversary mode on the Origins Edition, I can do the spin dash. Which is how I play all the Origin games. I'll be playing all the Origin games up through anniversary mode since more life improvements which I which I enjoy. Thing is, I enjoy Sonic 1. The zones are great though. Personally, I am more a fan of Chemical Plant Zones, and this is probably one of my favorite zones of all time, right next to uh, Middle Madness, but still. 
So, the gameplay is not bad. I still hold up to this day. You can pretty much you can pretty much move side to side, jump up and down. And actually both mode lets you use a spin dash. If you don't play choose to play in anniversary mode, you can kind of just roll down the hill to develop momentum. You got the classic just hitting a kind of classic jumping on your opponents. Uh, but the bosses are interesting sense. They're fun, I won't deny it. There's a lot to them. If I was constantly dealing with Eggman, although I won't deny The first boss fight is the most boring one since you literally just went to platform through platform, hitting him 10 times in a row, then giving up. Because as soon as you attempt it, I'm done. I mean, it's not bad. For what it is, it's a good game. But there are some issues. For one, the zone vi variety. I mean, we went from Green Hill Zone, Marble Zone, Spring Yard Zone, and so on and so forth constantly. Which I don't mind, to be honest. But just, I guess now to compare it to the more modern Sonic games, the zones are more diverse, more different. But I mean, granted, Sonic Mania did reuse a lot of zones from previous Sonic games to reintroduce a handful of new ones. I guess I can't be that picky. When it comes to getting the Chaos Emeralds, I don't want to talk about that. That stuff was painful, man. I mean, at least this version of the Chaos Emeralds are much easier to deal with than Sonic's 2. I stand by that as someone who's trying to get other Chaos Emeralds. Sonic 2 right now, I hate it. I don't know. Overall, to me personally, Sonic 1 is a pretty standalone Sonic game. Personally, I believe it could be better. I mean, at least with the at least the origins version of it, since at times it's very buggy and not responding. At times it can either slow down or speed up randomly. What I mean by that is that momentum-wise, sometimes momentum is perfect, sometimes it's buggy. It's, hey, I want to stop, but instead of not letting me stop, I keep going forward, or I can't have the right momentum in the air. Those are just my nitpicks. Personally, I enjoyed Sonic 1. I honestly do hope my complete Sonic 2 will be the best. But anyways, guys, this is it. I'm Lion DX here, and I'll see y'all next time. And that was my review of Sonic 1 on the Origin Collection for Nintendo Switch. To be honest, I enjoyed my playthrough of Sonic 1. Again, the Chaos Emeralds were really fun. And the Special Zones weren't that bad, to be honest. More enjoyable than Sonic 2, but I'm not gonna lie, if I said I didn't get on my first try, there were multiple attempts. But either way, I still got it, and I think, honestly, it was worth the playthrough. The music was good, as each zone was different and unique. Kinda wish there was more variety, but this is the first game, and as I said before, where permission much spoiled with the newer games, giving us newer zones and areas to explore. Overall, I give Sonic 1 a solid 8 out of 10. A really good start this first episode of Road to Sonic. I honestly hope that future games continue with this pattern as well. Anyways, I am Landing DX and I'll see y'all next time.